อบคือเพรสลี่ปุ๊บป่อยแล้วเหรอเฮ้ยโน้ตไปแกะสุดสินเหรอ guys hello I'm Maddy Without paint, this wall would look pretty dull, wouldn't it? But paint isn't just for decorating the house or adding splashes of colour. Paint can be used for lots of things. It can stop metal from rusting, wood from rotting. It can be waterproof, fireproof, burglar-proof, or like the one I'm using in my bathroom, mould-proof. And this is all thanks to chemicals. But what are chemicals? Well, the answer is pretty much everything. Water is a chemical. Air is a mixture of chemicals and gases, and we are all made up of chemicals. Some chemicals are natural. We find them in plants, the sea, or we extract them from the earth. And then there are the ones we make. We call them artificial chemicals, and they're usually made in factories by combining different chemicals together to make something new that has a special job, a bit like my mold-proof paint. But what chemicals are used to make paint, and how is it manufactured to make such useful stuff? This is where we'll get our answer: Axo Nobel in Ashington, in the north of England. This place is designed to be the most advanced, most sustainable paint manufacturing site in the whole world, and it's vast. It's even bigger than Buckingham Palace. We have giant, colourful robots, its own transport system, and lots and lots and lots of paint. In fact, this factory can produce up to a hundred million liters of paint every single year. That's enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool every ten days. That is mind-blowing. This factory is doing everything it can to reduce its impact on the environment too. It has solar panels, a biomass boiler to generate energy, and a special water treatment plant that washes the paint out of the wastewater so it can be reused again. Sustainable factory design like this means that this site has 75% fewer emissions than a standard paint factory. It has its own tank farm too, and as you can see, it is vast. This is Toby, who's helping us today. Say hi, Toby. And then down there, it's the crew. Look how tiny they are. <laughs> the tank farm is where we will find all of our chemicals, and they're delivered to the factory by lorries that come here to offload them. They're emptied using a kind of jumbo straw, which is sucking out the contents. This contains a chemical called latex. We can't see it right now, but it's an important part of our paint recipe. We'll find out more about it later. And right now, it's whizzing towards the factory. There's around 50 kilometers of pipe work running throughout the site. That's about the same as the world's tallest mountain, Mount Everest, stacked on top of itself. Five times. The chemicals zoom through this pipe network from the tank farm into the factory, where the journey continues. This is the slurry hall. Just as there are different recipes for cakes, there are different recipes for paint. Thousands of them, in fact, and different chemicals are needed for different paint recipes, depending on what the paint is for. The chemicals. Some are powdered, some are liquid, are mixed together with water really, really quickly to make the slurry. This mixing pump behind me rotates at 3,000 times a minute. That's really fast. Fun fact: the same equipment is also used to mix sugar into tomato ketchup. Just not here, in a different factory. You know what I mean. Slurry is a thick, sloppy liquid that's used as a base for all the different paint recipes. But what other ingredients do we need? I've come to the lab to meet Michelle. Michelle, what is it that you do here? I do colour matching. Okay, Michelle is an expert colour matcher. And she's going to show us some of the chemicals that go into our paint recipe. And here they are. Um, so, Michelle, what is this one, firstly? This one here, that is slurry. 
Okay, so we've just been to the slurry hall where the slurry is mixed. And can you see how it's bright white? And that's because it contains a powdered chemical called titanium dioxide, and that affects how bright a paint will be. That one is actually is pure water. Just water? Yes, from the tap. Then we all know what water is. That one there, that is latex. Okay, and what does the latex do? So the latex binds everything together mm -hmm. to create the base of the paint. Oh, so it works a bit a bit like a glue? Yeah, it kind of bubbles up as well. It has an effect with these three ingredients. And then lastly, what is this one? Oh, now this one here, uh, we can't actually tell you, I'm afraid, that is our secret ingredient. <laughs> Top secret ingredient. So all we know is that that is a special additive. Yeah. But I think we should get mixing. Slurry latex and the top secret ingredient are mixtures of different chemicals, but water is a chemical you might have already heard of. It's called H2O. The next thing is to add the colour. Uh -huh. And the colours, we actually call them tintas. The tintas are extremely concentrated, which means there's a lot of colour packed into a small space. In fact, less than a teaspoon of this tinta could colour 2,000 litres of paint, which is enough to fit in 105 buckets. That is bonkers. And um, right here we have black, blue and yellow. But what colour are we mixing? Today we're mixing mint macaroon. Mint macaroon. Yeah. It's hard to believe that these three bold colours are going to make something gentle and minty. Exactly, yeah. All right then, let's get, let's get mixing. Okay. A dash of blue, a spot of yellow and a drop of black is all we need to make the colour. <laughs> There's a reason I'm wearing a lab coat and Michelle isn't. <gasps> it's kind of minty. That is brilliant. That's mint macaroon. It is, yeah. yeah. A small amount of mint macaroon. So that's how you can make a sample of paint in a lab. But when you make this on a large scale, it's done down by the mixing tanks. On the factory floor, this is where the mixing happens. Inside these enormous tanks is where the slurry, the water, the latex, the top secret ingredients and the tints all end up and inside they're being mixed together. This tank carries 20,000 litres of paint. It's so big, it goes all the way down to the floor below us. <laughs> inside the tank is a long mixing blade with three paddles that are working to make sure that all of the chemicals are really well blended. Once the paint is complete, a small sample is brought to the laboratory to be tested to make sure that everything is up to scratch. Technicians test it to make sure that the colour, the thickness is right and it also has the correct chemical balance. And if everything passes the test, it ends up here, the filling line. And this is the really cool part. It's incredible. We have giant colourful robots. There are paint cans travelling along conveyor belts and there's even a kind of train track. This is an automated transport system and that yellow robot is bringing vats of paint to the filling line which begins downstairs. Here comes a delivery for the first machine. It's a pallet of unfilled and unlabeled paint cans. The machine uses suction to lift up a layer of empty paint cans and place them on a line on the conveyor belt. Next, the cans come to a labelling machine and these robots help to put on some sticky labels, a colour chip and a barcode. And now the big moment, the first time we see finished paint. This reminds me a little bit of an ice cream machine, except this is more of a mossy green colour. It's so cool, I love the sound. Can you hear that? That bit. <laughs> this factory can produce 33,000 colours of paint. I reckon I could probably name about 20. How many colours can you name? Lastly, the machine places and secures a lid onto each of the paint cans before they go on to be stacked onto a pallet by a giant blue robot that definitely looks like a dinosaur. The filled cans of paint are put onto wooden pallets and make their way here to this machine called a hood wrapper. It is state-of-the-art technology and it's working to cover the entire pallet and the paint in a thin layer of plastic. This machine actually helps to reduce the overall amount of packaging waste and it works really quickly. 
It can wrap an entire pallet in about a minute. That's 60 an hour. Finally, the wrapped pallets of paint are carried by a forklift onto the back of a lorry, ready to be sent to shops all across the country. And there you have it, a finished tin of paint ready for someone's eager paintbrush. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, stay curious, and I'll see you soon. Bye.